joining us now to talk about a little bit about change and about what uh, the the whole prep football situation and prep sports has been like in Louisiana thus far. The gentleman that does a great job with the Louisiana High School Coaches Association for the LHSAA, our good and great friend Eric Held. And Eric, uh, I guess you've had a chance to take a deep breath given the way this year's gone. Is that right? Deep breath is right, Ken. <laughs> Exhale, For sure, it's one way of one way of putting it. I tell you what, just when you think it can't get any weirder, I guess you could say, the last thirty hours have been a, has been a whirlwind. Just with teams moving their games from Friday to Wednesday or Thursday to Wednesday, even Saturday to Wednesday, forty-one games around the state on Wednesday. Absolutely remarkable, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Warren Eastern just scored, by the way. They lead East Processing 7-0, 658 to play in the first half of that contest. East St. John 6-0 over H.L. Bourgeois, early second quarter. Pearl River leads Springfield by the score of 7 to nothing as they go to the second quarter of that game. And you know, just to pass on a few scores of some of these games we're talking about that were moved ahead. Chalmette has defeated Grace King. 42 to nothing. That is the final score from this evening. All right, so uh, the hurricane is impending. Talk about the role that the LHSA plays in, in times like these. Bottom line is the schools have to make their own decisions to be able to decide when they can play, how they can play. Some games have been canceled, period. The schools couldn't get together on other dates. Others are rescheduled, and yet others found different opponents. Talk about what role the, the athletic association plays and in this particular circumstance when something like this happens. Sure. So the Athletic Association, led by Mr. Bonine, uh, just has a role of guiding the schools through times like these. It's uh, been interesting since mid-March, of course, and then returning in June 8th and then getting the go-ahead for fall sports with cross-country and swimming first and then volleyball and then, of course, football. And so it's great to see all four fall sports underway. But when it comes to to football, just in the last couple of days, of course, with the impending storm that will hit our coast and affect Louisiana, just playing a guiding role with the, with the schools and keeping an open line of communication with them. A lot of schools reached out to us concerning moving their games and, of course, just communicating with them to talk with the officials, to talk with security, and mainly to talk with each other and communicate between administrations with principals, athletic directors, and, of course, head coaches as well. So it's interesting to see how all of these things line up and how they all line up very quickly. It's amazing how many games uh, went from, say, Friday to Wednesday at 7 o'clock. We had a couple of games after 2 today where – officials associations were contacted between 2 and 3 p.m. to play at 7 and uh, just goes to show you all the hands that go into putting on a prep football game officials have been great as you know there is a shortage of officials we have 1200 plus officials um, that are registered on uh, during a normal season and then this year Lee Sanders who's the director of, of officials for the LHSA, along with all of the heads of the regional officials, uh, co the coordinators of those groups throughout the different areas of the state, they do such a great job in recruiting new officials and then also having to re-recruit, so to speak, and then dealing with the older population of officials as well. There's so many that are over the age of 50, and some have not returned due to the uh, fear of COVID. It's just something we have to live with. So um, the coaches understand this. They've been great. Um, some have gone ahead and scheduled Thursday night games. Some have gone ahead and done two Thursday night games where, you know, it's not something that's common for a, a school community, especially in a rural setting or in a, in a region where Thursday night games are uncommon, but a lot of those coaches and schools have stepped up to kind of help out. So it's been really refreshing to see all of the hands that have gone in to work together and help put on prep football. 
no doubt about it, it's our friend Eric Hell from the LSCA with us and talking about high school sports in Louisiana right now. Our car has taken a 6 to nothing lead over Catholic High at Memorial Stadium, late third quarter of that game, a touchdown pass from A.J. Samuel. Apparently the extra point missed there, though. Keep that in mind. I always mention that when I got you on the air, right? Got to talk about kickers. Got to talk about extra points. My old friend Henry Rando uh, on our show for so many years used to talk about that all the time. I always talked about extra points. You got to make the extra points. So many games are won and lost, and they really are, aren't they? Sure are. Uh, Carr's taken a 12 nothing lead, and both extra points were missed. Missed. And yeah. um, it, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, Carr held again. Uh, Catholic just punted and pinned Carr back inside their 20, but Carr's been unstoppable so far, just to give you an update on the game. But, yeah. Um, yeah, it's 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 incredible how many games, especially between two high-powered programs such as Catholic and Carr, come down to less than a touchdown. Of course, a kick here or there can make the difference. Yeah, it's amazing. I, you know, I, I talked to Bryce Brown. I, you know, we we covered the game Saturday night, and of course they're playing on a very short week. You know, they played they played Saturday night, and they didn't play Chop Liver. They played Warren Eastern. And right. they didn't, it didn't matter to them that they were going to play Wednesday night, even though they were playing Catholic. And, oh, by the way, next week, Carr plays John Curtis, okay? So <laughs> when you talk about scheduling, it doesn't get any better than that. And they're better. Carr is a better team than they were last year. They were young last year. They got most everybody back. Uh, they have a new quarterback, but it's like they just replaced quarterbacks, and A.J. Samuel is really good, so uh, not a – not a shock. And the other part of that is they uh, they went into that game tonight with a little bit of an attitude because the Catholic put it to them last year, and they're not used to that happening to them. So I suspected this would be a, a much tougher game for Catholic, and Carr would have a good chance, and so far it's certainly panning out that way. Sure, and both of these coaches uh, two years ago during the scheduling process had a hand in it uh, being on the Catholic staff at that time, and Gabe said, hey, let's schedule a – great power from the New Orleans area, Easton or Carr, uh, someone like that, that 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 would benefit the program and said, hey, let's play Carr. They continue to win state championships, and Bryce was open to it, and he does such a tremendous job. They both do. Um, you know, you talk about the uh, short turnaround, and both of these guys um, make sure that their players – do not buy into the, hey, we have such a quick turnaround. They're going to lean on the tradition. They're going to lean on their their training. They're going to lean on the, on on their coaching. Both staffs have tremendous coaching staff. So mm -hmm. they're going to do what they do and fall back on what they've been doing over the course of the last few years, which is win. Correct. And obviously, these, these are the games you love to see when people are willing to schedule each other. There was going to be another one of those games this weekend, but unfortunately, the storm messed that one up, and that was uh, Rommel at St. Thomas More, but uh, that one got canceled. And uh, just unfortunate with schedules and exams and trying to make things work, they just couldn't make it work. But we love seeing those games because it, it really brings a light uh, to everyone uh, in the best of the, the state of Louisiana. Uh, Eric, when you you know when you look at what's happened so far with athletics, you know you've had a few cases. You knew that was going to happen with uh, with that. But in terms of people keep asking me the question, well, what's the policy? And I tell them the answer: Look, it's it's 14 days. So if you've got somebody or bodies involved with your program that test positive, basically it becomes a a 14 day waiting period. Correct? That's right, Ken. And it comes down to, first of all, these coaches and ADs and administrators, they've done such a tremendous job since June 8th, and you, we can't state that enough, how great of a job they've done keeping their athletes safe. Over the summer, we we heard, um, and it was reported to us, it wasn't mandated for schools to report, but they did so out of a courtesy to us, and they did a great job of that and really being honest and keeping an open line of communication we saw cases here or there. Probably half of the parishes uh, had at least one case from a school, whether it was a, a, a student athlete or even a coach. 
that, that had a uh, positive test. And then now, as you saw last week, we had 11 um, schools that had to cancel their games due to at least one positive case in their program, whether it was a player or a coach. And so just looking at what's going on around the country, talking with our, our, our colleagues around the nation, uh, Mr. Bonine has a Zoom meeting with his colleagues at least once a week. Uh, last week we had a – or two weeks ago we had a, a Zoom call with uh, the southeast region of the country when it came to uh, football, and it's something that's just going to be a part of life. Uh, I think Alabama a couple weeks ago had 15 games that were canceled, and it's unfortunate – it's something you got to live with. And uh, like you said, when you do have someone that tests positive, it's a 14-day quarantine for that individual. And it's up to that school and the health care provider that they use. So the LHSA doesn't um, take a hand in that. We don't mandate that. We don't get involved, but we do give guidance. And uh, that's what it is, 14 days, and that's coming from the uh, Department of Health. Well, you've got the Coaches Association, so you deal with those guys, and you were a coach for all these years. What's been the overarching response from coaches about the fact that they are having a chance to play at this point? Well, it's really uh, – they, they really feel blessed to have the opportunity to coach because – for a while there, there were a lot of coaches out there who really had a, a negative outlook on things that didn't think we were going to have a season. Um, there were a lot of people out there like myself that were positive and always felt like we were going to play. There, were, there was a group of people that thought that we would wait until spring and play and flip season. So there were a lot of schools of thought out there as we progressed through the summer. And then once we got into August, I think there was kind of split camps, whether the season would get underway at the beginning of October like it did. And some felt, on the other hand, that, hey, we're, we're kind of in a sticky situation here. The further we move along, the uh, more negative of the outlook, so to speak, uh, whether we have a season or not. So I think when – the executive committee made that decision along with Mr. Bonine under his guidance to move forward um, with the help of Dr. Greg Stewart of Tulane. It was just a blessing. I think that all of our coaches and our student athletes and our principals and athletic directors so looking forward to getting underway, had a few weeks to get uh, acclimated in gear and then move forward. And at that point, things really moved fast. And next thing you know, you blinked and the season was here. So I think everyone's really blessed to be here. We're in week two and everyone knows the possibility that they could get shut down at any time. A, a case could, sh could pop up here or there, uh, no matter how safe you play it, no matter how close to the vest you play when it comes to um, the mitigation measures that you follow. And uh, that's one big reason why schools are playing tonight on a Wednesday and giving their kids the opportunity because you never know when that opportunity is going to be taken away. You know, everybody says, hey, you're, only get, you're guaranteed 10 games. That's usually what a lot of coaches say. Well, I think we've learned that you're not guaranteed 10 games, that you're guaranteed the next one. That's right in front of you. So I think a lot of coaches are taking that, that, that outlook on things. Hey, guys, we've got this one right ahead of us. Let's not be concerned with the playoffs down the road or um, playing for a state championship. Let's take this, this game at the end of the week and just look to each practice and get better and enjoy each other, enjoy our teammates, and um, be blessed that we have another day to – play football play with uh, 250 to play in the first half Warren Easton 70 to Sanchez nothing watch it live at CrescentCitySports.com with Lenny Van Gilder and Coach Wade Kaiser as we speak
from Joe Brown Stadium in New Orleans East. Good hard-hitting game. Two good teams there. The A's a good team, and they're in my top ten in 5A. Uh, CrescentCitySports.com, Omar East, and, of course, Elite in 4A. Now, as we let you get away, Eric, it's pretty ironic that 26 years of our original prep football report, we've never done what we're going to do tomorrow. That is to have the show on Thursday night. So we're doing our original tomorrow night because of what's happened with the hurricane and all the games that have changed. It would not have been feasible to do a five-hour production on Friday night when nobody in your area is playing and nobody really in South Louisiana is playing. So we're doing it tomorrow night starting at 6 p.m. with our full coverage per usual. So live long enough you see everything. The first time we've ever done the original on a Thursday night. So there's that. <laughs> I just thought I'd throw that out there to you, man. It's pretty strange. No, um, it's 2020. What else would you expect? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And by the way, uh, when we start the show tomorrow at about uh, 610 or so, Eddie Bonin is going to join us for about eight to 10 minutes uh, just to, to really share some of the positives about what's happened thus far uh, with high school athletics and the great job that he's done and the association's done working day and night to try to Give these kids a chance. At the end of the day, that's what it was all about. That's happened. And you knew there were going to be some setbacks, but the fact of the matter is that a lot of young women and young men are getting a chance to compete, and that's a wonderful thing. And we do daily volleyball reports at CrescentCitySports.com, a cross-country report with the ranking statewide, our swimming report yesterday uh, as well on the site. So it's all there every day at CrescentCitySports.com, and it's all because – you guys have done a great job of providing the avenue for these kids to play. Well, we appreciate it, Ken. And for so long, as you mentioned, over two decades, uh, the amount of coverage that you've dedicated toward prep sports, you've put a tremendous part of your life into it since, heck, now running on four decades, going back to the late 70s when yep. you dedicated a big part of your life. And I know your family – definitely has been along for the ride and they've made sacrifices as well and I know there's a lot of people out there that definitely uh, when they see you thank you for what you've poured your heart and soul into to give back uh, growing up as a as a sports fan and having that opportunity to give back so I know there's a lot of coaches out there a lot of fans and especially the athletes out there in all sports that, that, that owe a debt of gratitude to you for the coverage that you've given Prep Sports and, of course, at CrescentCitySports.com, a great media outlet. Eric, thank you. It's a pleasure. Thanks for joining us. And, and listen, keep up the great work. We'll talk soon. Appreciate it, Ken. Thanks a lot, man.